Malcolm and Marie is out on Netflix now. It stars John David Washington and Zendaya as both Malcolm and Marie. And Malcolm is a filmmaker, and after the premiere of his new movie, tensions arise and painful revelations in their relationship occur as many arguments break out between both Malcolm and Marie. This movie is written and directed by Sam Levinson. You might know him from uh, Euphoria on HBO. Zendaya and John David Washington give career best performances here. John David Washington is the best I have ever seen him. He's definitely learning from his dad. He definitely sounded like Denzel. Every, every scene he was in, I was just like, this is like tailor made for Denzel Washington. Zendaya is also really good in this movie god damn like i just love it when actors or actresses can just tap into a new realm that you didn't know that they had because this is by far like the best i have seen zendaya like i don't think she's gonna have another performance for a while that is going to top this i'm actually surprised that she wasn't even nominated for golden globes or sag awards or Whatever the hell, because, I mean, those are a mess anyway. But this is career best work here. Some of the camera work and a lot of the shots in this movie are really good as well. You have some beautiful wides, dolly shots. There's a huge one-take shot with John David Washington where he's, where he's giving a monologue. You can see through the window of their house. It's very clear. It's like looking glass. He's just giving a monologue about how much he hates critics. That LA critic, man, I don't know. She doesn't give him a bad review. And this entire monologue is all in one take, at least to my knowledge. I don't think that it's broken up at all. Usually with these one take shots, a lot of movies tend to film them in separate shots and then stitch it together in the editing process to make it look like one shot. I don't think that's the case here. And this is about a four to five minute monologue about his critics and the anxiety that he faces when reviews for his movies come out. And it's a very great scene. It's probably the best scene in the entire movie. That's where the positives stop for me. I did not like this movie the rest of the way. One, one argument happens and I'm like, okay, I understand both sides of it. I understand more where Zendaya is coming from because John David Washington's character, Malcolm, having a huge panic attack he's anxiety filled rage here and she's trying to calm him down i'm like okay i get why he would be flipping out i would probably be doing the same thing as well the second argument comes and i say okay well i'm this is a little awkward the third argument comes and i say this is more abusive than kylo ren and ray in the entire Star Wars sequel trilogy. Then, the fourth argument comes, and I just want to turn it off. I'm exhausted! Almost every scene after that opening scene that looks like it's a one-take shot is very tedious, pretentious, tiresome, loud, obnoxious. That's what this entire movie is. Sam Levinson wanted to have a commentary on critics and abusive relationships, I believe, and the toxicity of it all, but he really didn't have a commentary on the toxicity of abusive relationships. He was just showing an abusive relationship with no resolve. These arguments between both Malcolm and Marie do not have any resolve to them at all. They're arguing, you understand their points, but then they just kind of stop and there's no resolution. Basically, what this movie tells me is that they're in a toxic, abusive relationship and they don't like each other. So I don't know what Sam Levinson was trying to accomplish with a story like this, but it just didn't work for me. And these arguments don't have the flair or the energy to actually showcase that this is a commentary about toxic relationships. Like, you are showing a toxic relationship. You're not saying anything about them. You're showing it, and I don't think you're showing them in the best light, honestly. Another thing is, is that Sam Levinson is a white director, and he's looking at this. I don't usually get into this stuff, but he's looking at Malcolm's perspective from the perspective of a white filmmaker onto a black filmmaker. And I just think his ideologies don't really match up with anything that... John David Washington's character is saying. So the dialogue doesn't even feel crisp or snappy. The dialogue feels stale and inaccurate in that part. If you know what I mean. I, it's a little bit hard for me to explain. I, would, I, I, guess like, I guess it's Sam Levinson being a white director, but yet he's writing a commentary on the state of film criticism towards a black filmmaker and I just don't think it works. Like if this was a black director that made this movie, it was criticism towards a black filmmaker, then I think it's a different story. That's basically what I'm saying. 
And, I mean, he tries to address that issue. There's a line in the film that John David Washington's character Malcolm says where they accuse me of making a politically charged movie about, like, racism or the hood or something. And it's like, it's not about that. It's about shame. And I agree to an extent because I do think audiences nowadays just look at anything involving women or people of color or minorities in general, anything that just has them in a lead. The most immediate thing I see is that people say it's gone woke. And I just think that that's an invalid criticism because that's not what the filmmakers are trying to get across, in my opinion. They're just trying to tell a story. And it just so happens that there are more films that are starring people of color or minorities or women and i don't think that there's any agenda pushing so i like that the movie addresses that issue it's just it should have been a director or a filmmaker that was a person of color directing it telling this story about film criticism onto another black filmmaker the ideology behind sam levinson's criticism just doesn't really make sense other than what i mentioned i said i liked if you listen to the rest of the dialogue you'll understand why also did this movie have to be in black and white nope nope i feel like it was just there because sam levinson was like oh hey look bank was in black and white roma was in black and white let's make this movie in black and white there's definitely going to be some YouTuber that comes along at some point and be like, Netflix black and white movies ranked. Here you go, guys. It did not have to be in black and white. I don't understand why Sam Levinson felt that it needed to be because it didn't really enhance the movie. It didn't add a noir feel to me. I felt like I just could have watched this in color and the same. I probably would have gotten more out of it if it was in color, honestly. I feel like he was trying to go for a more emotional impact, but... I didn't have that because the movie was in black and white. Honestly, guys, this movie left me exhausted. I'm exhausted! I don't think I can recommend this movie, honestly. There's a couple of good things, but the rest of it is just a hosh posh of ideas that don't really mesh well together and ideology that doesn't sit well with me. I'm going to say you will enjoy Malcolm and Marie if you like stale popcorn. So guys, you may notice that my camera is a little bit different. Uh, apparently my camera died, so until I can get a new one, I'm probably gonna have to use my laptop, but I got I got the same lighting, so the lighting works, so if I'm like leaning over a lot like this, it's because I'm trying to keep myself in frame, but you get the idea. So what'd you guys think of Malcolm and Marie? Drop me some feedback in the comment section below. I'll leave my link to my website in the description below as well. You guys are the best. Thank you for watching. My name is Alex Madden, and I'll see you at the movies somewhere.